So this video will be the fourth part of my Who Manchester United Should Sign series. In the other episodes, I looked at who United should sell, as well as the goalkeeper, centre-back, right-back, central defensive midfielder, and central midfielder that United should sign. All of those videos will be linked in a playlist in the description below. But before I go any further, if you need a place where you can keep up to date with the latest transfer news, find all the match stats you need from games across the globe, and watch highlights and stream live football matches, then you need to download the OneFootball app. I use the OneFootball app because it's it's completely free and not only do they have stats and transfer news but they also have videos to watch and articles to read which is where I get a lot of my ideas for new videos and as I said before you can stream live football matches and watch highlights all on the app. Downloading the OneFootball app will help support the channel as well so I'll leave it linked in the description below. And in this video we'll be looking at the wide attacker that United should sign. But before we get into any options what do United actually need from a new wide attacker? Well unlike the other positions it's pretty unclear and this is because we we don't exactly know how Ten Hag will use his wide attackers and the system he decides to use will obviously change the type of player he needs and so I'm quickly going to run through a few different scenarios with the systems he could use and what each specifically would require. The first is if he decides to use two natural wingers which is what he did for the majority of his time at Ajax. With the fullbacks either inverting or dropping to create a back three, the wide attackers in the 4-3-3 will be tasked with holding the width in the system and pushing high to pin the opposition's fullbacks backwards. We saw David Neres and Ziyech do this in that famous 2019 side, with Tadic and Anthony doing it this season. If Ten Hag wanted to do this again, he would need to either bring in a natural right or left winger, which would allow that player to play on one of the flanks with Sancho on the other. I think Sancho would be best on the flank with the more offensive fullback, so with my current signings it would be Frimpong or Dallo at right back and Shaw at left back, which would allow United to vary the fullback's positioning, with sometimes Dallo dropping to create the back three, with Shaw inverting, and sometimes the right back most probably Frimpong being the player to invert and if Sancho plays on the side with the inverted fullback this will suit him best as that player Shaw for example from the left side can push further forward into the attack and make over and underlapping runs ahead of Sancho which will suit the Englishman's game as when he has runners ahead of him it drags the defenders away allowing him to drive forward whilst also providing him with the runs to thread passes in behind the back line too. So Sancho can play as a winger from the left or the right but I think the winger brought in needs to be very good at taking on players in one-on-one -on -one situations or have electric pace to run past them as with the fullback on their side likely retaining a deeper position the defenders on their side won't be dragged away as often as on Sancho's side and there won't be as many runners ahead to thread passes into however I do also think that Sancho could potentially be used on the side of the deeper fullback if Ten Hag wanted to bring a wide attacker who could drift in field into central positions playing more as an inside forward and being a goal threat rather than a player to hold his width and create from the flanks and this could be what United need as currently I feel that United lack players with clinical finishing ability in the front line. Sancho and Fernandes have been quite wasteful when having big chances created for them this season and a lot of the difference between winning, losing and drawing a match, picking up 0, 1 or 3 points can be down to the individual finishing ability of players in the side. After all a manager who sets up the system and the deeper lying players involved in the build up aren't the ones to put the ball into the net and if your attackers are wasting chances the whole build up and system counts for nothing in the grand scheme of the whole season. With Sancho not having a fullback bombing down his outside, United would have to get runners making underlapping runs, as Manchester City were so good at doing with Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne making underlapping runs between the fullbacks and centre backs from around 2017 to about 2020. So, this is one slight adaptation that Ten Hag would have to make depending on who the wide attacker holding the width is. So, now let's get on to the first option. So, Rafinha at Leeds is a player I've liked for some time. He's 25 26 in December and has a contract at Ellen Road until 2024 and was valued at around £50 million in January but with Leeds looking likely to get relegated and even if they aren't in a complete mess it's reported he'd cost around £35 million in the summer however Barcelona are also reportedly interested and you can see why Rafinha would play from the right flank in Ten Hag's system and so it would be more of a natural winger rather than a player drifting in field he has fantastic technical ability having a wand of a left foot enabling him to cut inside and find a through ball long pass or in swinging cross. He's also very good at taking on players down the flank, breezing past players and using his ball control to float through a crowd and that's exactly what United would be looking for in a right winger. I do think that Rafinha has dropped off this season compared to last. His FB ref report does reflect this. He's expected assists, non-penalty goals and non-penalty XG are all around the 50th to the 70th percentile and I would expect these to dramatically increase to at least the 70s if he were to move to a better side. His dribbles 
and progressive passes are a lot higher, showing how good he is with the ball at his feet, and his defensive metrics look very impressive as well. His style of play reminds me of someone like Angel Di Maria or Hakim Ziyech, and I do wonder whether he could be utilised in a more central position as more of a playmaker as well, so he would bring a degree of versatility to the attack, which is a big bonus when working under a tactically fluid manager like Ten Hag. Antonia Ajax is another player who would be a great option as a natural winger on the right side for Ten Hag, not least because he's played under Ten Hag for the last two seasons since joining Ajax from Sao Paulo for £14 million back in 2020. Anthony like Rafinha is a left-footed natural winger who plays from the right side, holding his width and looking to receive the ball, isolate the fullback in a 1v1 before using his flair and trickery to glide past him. Like Rafinha, he's always looking for that opportunity to cut in onto his left foot, where he can then curl in an in-swinging cross or look to release a curling shot towards the far corner. He's got a lower centre of gravity than Rafinha, standing at around 5 for 8, and I'd also say he's a bit quicker off the mark when accelerating. I'd compare him more to someone like Riyad Mahrez at Manchester City, and under Ten Hag at United, he'd be utilised in a similar way to how Pep uses the Algerian, being the outlet to shift the ball out to on the right side and providing a goal-scoring threat as well as a creative one. Now at the moment, I do think Anthony needs a lot more work on his end product. He looks fantastic in highlights reels, with his flair and dribbling looking world-class at times, but at the top level, if fundamentally comes down to how you contribute to your side scoring goals, whether this is progressing the ball into dangerous areas, creating chances or scoring chances that you get, and right now I think Anthony is only an option for United because of his potential, which is obviously there but it does need a lot more developing than someone like Rafinha, who in my opinion is on the cusp of becoming a top level player. When we look at Anthony's stats this season in the era of Divisi, we can see this. For key passes, Anthony's recorded 1.9 per 90, which is only the 29th most in the league behind players like Reese Nelson and Bruma. Now this isn't a terrible return, but it isn't exactly as incredible as you may have hoped. He has bagged 12 goals and 8 assists in 33 games for Ajax this season, which is a fairly good return, but I feel that a move to Manchester United this summer may be a little bit premature. However, there is a quick young South American wide attacker in the Eredivisie, who I do think could be ready for a step up to a big club. And it's Fairnoid's Colombian attacker Luis Sinistera, who is 22, 23 in June, and was signed from the Colombian side Unce Caldas in 2018 for just £1.8 million. Sinistera, like Anthony, is a fantastic dribbler, but I would actually say he's a more effective dribbler than the Brazilian, despite not looking as aesthetically pleasing. He has completed the most dribbles of any player to play more than 800 minutes in the Eredivisie this season with 4 per 90, substantially more than Anthony, who ranks in 19th with 2.2 per 90. And Sinistera also differs to Anthony as he isn't a natural winger and a lot of his dribbles do come when he drifts in field in between the lines, receives the ball and then turns and drives directly at the back line. He is very elegant as well, able to shift the ball quickly when driving at players in the box. He's more of an inside forward than a winger, playing from the left side where he can cut in and shoot with his right foot. And this is where I think he could be a better option for United than Anthony as he has a greater variety of finishes. Anthony generally is cutting in from a wide position on the right and shooting with his left, whereas Sinistera can do this from the left with his right foot, but he can also shoot across the keeper with his left, or burst in behind the back line into a one-on-one -on -one position before finishing. He has the body type and running style of someone like Vinicius Jr., but I would compare him stylistically to a forward like Sadio Mane, a player who whilst being a wide attacker is much more of a forward than a winger, and will be a significant goal threat which is what United need and his numbers do show this. He scored 12 goals in 28 Eredivisie games, and 23 3 in 45 games in all competitions with all of those being non-penalties as well. Per 90, he is scoring 0.5 goals in the Eredivisie, just slightly higher than Anthony's 0.4. But I think Sinistera's goal scoring is only going to improve. He can hit shots from outside of the box with his right foot, and inside the box, he can shoot with power off his right or left, and I do think that given he is just 22 years old, he could develop into a top-level inside forward, playing from United's left side, becoming almost a second striker in the final third. He has a contract at Feyenoord until 2024, and hasn't been hyped up in the same way as other Eredivisie players have, so I reckon he could be available for between 20 and 25 million, potentially 30 million pounds at the most, which is a fantastic fee for a player who is already producing pretty good output and has huge potential. 
The next player on my list is a player who I think could be ideal and has the potential to be an absolute world beater and it's Usman Dembele. Now before I come on to the downsides of a Dembele Manchester United move, let's look at what he could bring to the side. So Dembele as nearly everyone knows is one of the best dribblers in world football and combine this with his flair pace and being two footed and you can see why Dembele still has such hype around his name despite having a few off seasons. He's completed the second most dribbles of any player in La Liga this season with 3.8 per 90 behind only Villarreal's Samuel Chukwueze. And after a few seasons where he flattered to deceive at Barca, he is now back to producing top level output, being especially dangerous when putting in crosses from the flank, able to curl in an outswinging cross into the space between the keeper and defenders, whilst from the other side he's also able to delicately lift in an in-swinging cross, curling towards the goal, and this has been extremely effective this season as he's recorded the most assists in La Liga with 13 as Benzema sits in second with 10. He also has the third highest who scored rating in La Liga behind only Vinicius in second and Benzema in first but we can see clearly how much of a creative threat Dembele is when we look at his expected assists as according to Understat in La Liga this season he records the highest XA out of any player to play more than a thousand minutes with 0.57 per 90 as Gerard Moreno sits in second with 0.38 per 90 but his FB Riff report gives the clearest understanding of not just Dembele's strengths but also his weaknesses he sits in a 99th percentile for expected assists and assists, progressive carries and dribbles, whilst also ranking exceptionally highly for progressive passes, shot creating actions and shots, showing that creatively over the past year Dembele has been producing not just top level output but potentially world class output. However as you can see he massively underperforms his non penalty xg which in itself is only in the 40th percentile but he ranks in just the 8th percentile for non penalty goals and this highlights one of my biggest concerns about Dembele which is his wastefulness in front of goal. He scored just one La Liga goal this season and in general he doesn't offer much goal scoring threat which definitely stops him progressing into that world class elite winger bracket whilst he has shown in the past that he has the ability to shoot off either foot when around the box I think he lacks a reading of the game and composure to get into shooting opportunities and then finish them when he does get the chance he's 25 26 in May so it's not like he's a youngster anymore either he is available on a free this summer if he doesn't re-sign with Barcelona but he still won't be cheap and likely will command a salary of at least £300,000 per week which is around 15 million pounds per year. Also factoring in his injury record over the past few seasons and attitude problems that have cropped up now and then and I just see him as a player that United should avoid as the last thing United want is signing a big name player with a massive ego who has the potential to go through dry spells and doesn't exactly have the work rate that a manager like Ten Hag would require. The next player on my list is a player who differs significantly to the others on this list and it's PSV's Cody Gakpo. Gakpo is a 23 year old Dutch international who is more of a central attacking midfielder than a natural wide player and so would be used by Ten Hag as a player to start wide and drift in between the lines rather than holding his width from the flank. But despite not being what I would call a natural winger, Gakpo does have certain traits of a winger so he's more of an inside forward as he does possess great dribbling ability, a quick burst of acceleration and crucially he's producing fantastic creative output this season. He's got a tall frame around 6 foot 2, 6 foot 3 in height, but his body movements are very coordinated and functional for such a tall player, as he's able to glide with the ball possessing superb close ball control and has a great weight of pass around the box. As in a similar way to how Sancho does, Gakpo can slide and thread passes in behind the back line to find runners ahead. This season in the Eredivisie, he's recorded the third most key passes of any player to play more than 1,000 minutes, with 3.3 per 90, only behind Orkan Koku of Feyenoord in second and Dusan Tadic of Ajax in first. He has hit 12 goals in 27 games this season in the Eredivisie, 21 in 47 in all competitions and in the Eredivisie he also averages 0.6 goals per 90 minutes, meaning that he scores just over one goal every other game. Fantastic output for a player who is more of an attacking midfielder than a forward. Now as I said he differs significantly to the others on this list and so Ten Hag would probably have to make a tactical adaptation in possession, with Gatko drifting in field from the left side while Sancho holds his width on the right, the left back Luke Shaw most likely would push further forward down the left flank to hold the width and one of the three central midfielders most likely Bruno Fernandes could push up between the lines giving United a 2-3-4 shape in possession with Gatko playing in the left sided half space which would allow him to still receive the ball centrally but also drift wide and look to cut in and create or release a shot with his right foot. Also if you are wondering why there are random players in this United 11 check out the earlier episodes in my series which will be 
linked in the description and also in the comments section as well. So Gakpo is a player who has huge potential and I'd compare him to someone like Kevin De Bruyne, not in terms of playing style as Gakpo is not as good a passer or crosser as De Bruyne, but in the sense that he's a goal scoring attacking midfielder who can carry the ball forward and create chances for others. Gakpo has a contract at PSV until 2026, so he's not going to be as cheap as other Eredivisie players, but I reckon he'd cost between 35 and 40 million pounds, which all in all I think is a fair fee for a player of his age, potential, playing style and from the output he's already produced in the Eredivisie. Another player who like Gakpo would play more as an inside forward moving infield into central positions rather than playing as a natural winger is RB Leipzig's Christopher Nkunku. Now I did do a whole video analysing Nkunku which I'll leave in the eye above and in the description below but here's a player who is very similar to Gakpo. He's 24, 25 in November and like the PSV player provides both a creative and goal scoring threat. Developing as a winger Nkunku has fantastic dribbling and is able to glide past players in central areas but he also has the vision and weight of pass to create in the final third and this season he's also added goal scoring to his game playing the role of a second striker at times with excellent movement ahead of Andre Silva Leipzig's deeper lying forward and this has seen him not just get more chances but with his finishing improving as well and Kunku is now putting up goal scoring output of a top level player as you can see from his FB ref report and Kunku is a complete forward he ranks incredibly highly for pressures tackles and interceptions showing how well he'd fit into 10 Hag's pressing side but also in terms of ball progression he is top class ranking in the 90th percentile or higher for dribbles progressive carries progressive passes received and progressive passes as well combine this with him sitting in the 97th percentile for expected assists and him massively overperforming he's already very high non-penalty xg and you can see that Nkunku has it all he'd be the perfect player to start wide for Ten Hag but float in between the lines and play as a second striker to Ronaldo in the final third making runs ahead of the forward line into goal scoring positions which is exactly what United have lacked this season. If Ronaldo was to be used more as a deeper lying forward dropping off to link the play under Ten Hag then I could see both Nkunku and Fernandes thriving whilst playing the roles of second strikers in possession and breaking into the space vacated by Ronaldo's deeper movement. Nkunku would be expensive at least 60 million pounds but considering his age current ability and the potential for him to explode into a world class player next season I think it would definitely be worth it. But there's also another what I would call premium player who could be a good option for United and that's Bayer Leverkusen's French winger Moussa Diaby. Diaby is just 22, 23 in July and was signed for £13 million back in 2019 from PSG. Diaby is an electric winger with fantastic acceleration of the mark which makes him the perfect counter-attacking weapon, able to drive forward with the ball at pace. He isn't as good as someone like Usman Dembele at beating players in 1v1s as he doesn't quite have the same level of close ball control though his sheer acceleration does does enable him to glide past players at times. However, Diaby is top level in the final third. When driving down the flank, he's superb at playing a perfectly weighted pass across the box for a player at the far post. Exactly the type of pass you'd want your wide attacker to be able to play, especially when operating in a quick transition in attack. But also, Diaby is a very impressive finisher. Being a fantastic shooter in the box with either fur, able to drive the ball low and hard across the keeper when in wide positions in the box. And I think he'd provide United with the clinical finishing ability that they've been lacking and what the likes of Usmond and Bele and Anthony are missing from their game. The RB has scored 13 goals and picked up 12 assists in 32 Bundesliga games this season, scoring 17 and assisting 14 in 42 games in all competitions. And when we look at his FB Ref report, we can see that like Nkunku, he's massively overperforming, he's already relatively high non-penalty XG, showing that he can be used as a forward to score goals, whilst he's also recording an expected assist rate in the 93rd percentile. His ball progressing metrics could be a little higher, but I would expect them to improve over the next few seasons, particularly at a big club. The one concern would be his defensive output. However, just from watching him, I would say that he's capable of making the adaptation to Ten Hag's more aggressive pressing style, and so that shouldn't be a major problem. Like Nkunku, he would be expensive, costing between 50 and 60 million pounds, I would estimate, but I would definitely say he would be a great signing for United, playing more as an orthodox left winger, with Sancho doing the same on the right. And so he would be suitable if Ten Hag felt like he wanted a more traditional winger brought in. So out of all the players I've mentioned, let's narrow it down. My two premium options would be Musa Diaby and Nkunku, with Cody Gakpo and Sinistera, the alternative cheaper options. Now, as I've said multiple times, this would depend on whether Ten Hag wanted a natural winger 
or more of an inside forward as Diaby is the most natural winger out of the four, with Gakpo and Kunku and Sinistera all playing more as inside forwards or second strikers. And Kunku would be my number one as I think he's a level above the rest and he's on the cusp of being an absolute world beater. And so I think United should go out and spend the £60 million on him and get a world class creator and finisher in their side. If he wasn't available, I'd probably go with Gakpo as I feel like Diaby is slightly overpriced and I personally think United need a player like Gakpo who can drift infield and drive the attack forward whilst also providing a creative and goal scoring threat. Sinistera would be my third choice over Diaby just because of the price. I'm not 100% convinced of Diaby at the top level so £15 million plus is a gamble and I think Sinistera for around half of that is a better deal and the Colombian also has huge potential like Diaby. So my top three would be Nkunku, Gakpo and then Sinistera. So now I've gone through all the six positions that I identified for improvement in episode one. In the last episode of this series, I will be breaking down how all my new signings would fit into Ten Hag's side tactically, whilst also going through any changes to my selections that I would consider. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you get notified when that video comes out, put your thoughts in the comment section below, and check out the description for more videos and the other videos in the series as well.